few, maybe three, four, maybe five week series. I don't know. We'll just see. We're just probably going to scratch the surface today, get, get it laying some foundation. Um, you good? So anyway, good to be here tonight and uh, excited about what has already been happening tonight, but what God's fixing to do tonight and the word that's going to come forth. And amen, the depths of what he's going to give us tonight. So Father, we thank you for the meat of your word tonight. God, we thank you for those that are here. Lord, I ask you to uh, open their hearts up to receive. Uh, God, your engrafted word tonight. Uh, Father, I thank you for the anointing that destroys every yoke. I ask you, Father, for a spirit of wisdom tonight, revelation, uh, in the knowledge of who you are tonight, that our hearts would be flooded tonight with revelation light. God, that we may know what is the hope of your calling, what is the riches of the glory of your inheritance in us the saints is. God, I ask you to open up a door to us, a door of utterance tonight, to make known the mysteries of the gospel to those that are here online in the house. God, we thank you for those mysteries coming forth tonight. I surrender and submit to you, Holy Ghost. God, I ask you to bless your word tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you give him a hand clap one time? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want, to, I want to come from this with this title here. It's going to be a, a unique title, but following instructions. And as I got into this, I wanted to take it all the way to the end. If you ever know, if you ever go in to start studying something of vain, you know, which I, I believe that we could continue to go if we just stayed in one. Like when I say a vein, if we were studying like divine healing, you know, as part of the redemption plan. And I just, I just wanted to stay in the divine healing. I mean, the more I study, the more the Spirit of God is going to reveal more and more to me. And, and I believe it would be a never-ending, you know, you could go really deep into any area. As a pastor, you have to be able to, to feed wherever the Holy Ghost says, but you can't stay in one area to feed the sheep. You can't do that. You have to be able to feed in many different areas. Whatever you have need of, that's what, amen? So it's a different than, than, than it would be a specialized, you know, a prophet that, that operates in just a specialty anointing or an evangelist or, uh, you know, that operates in a specialty anointing and just stays in one area, right? So following instructions is where I want to, to start this at. I want to go to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 through 20. Isaiah chapter 1. Verse 18 through 20. We're going to get into some deep word here. I'm going to stay in the word. You know, I love the word of God. Church, I love the word of God. There's nothing like opening my Bible and getting into my prayer closet with the Holy Ghost and opening up this word and letting it come alive. Are you hearing me tonight? Letting it come alive to you and God speak to you through the pages of this word right here. Are you hearing me? Don't ever lose the hunger and the love, brother, for this word right here. This word right here will bring life. And if you're a born-again Christian, this word and the Holy Spirit is the only thing that can bring you life. It's the only thing that can sustain you, period. There's nothing else that can feed you. A lot of times you get weak as a Christian, it's because your spiritual life is lacking. A lot of times we get, we get weak physically as Christians and we think it's because we got to work out more or we gotta, we got to eat better and you should eat better and you should work out and exercise, you know, take care of your temple and the body. You should do that. But a lot of times you can trace it back to a spiritual deficiency. A lot of times you can trace a weakness physically back to not staying spiritually strong like you should be. If you ever notice, if you, you've heard the old... You know, the old, the old Holy Ghost filled people, you know, when we was coming up, they would, you know, the older women that would be 80 years old and have a pep in their step. We still got some in here. Y'all ain't 80, but I'm just saying. But they got a pep in their step and they outdo most of us young people. Why? Because they stay full of the Holy Ghost and they've shot up by by kit that able so and they out there running around doing ten different jobs and we are <gasps> we we get we get we get messed up on one and you wonder why you know I remember what uh what what uh one of the evangelists he said this uh he said that he come off the ship he was on a navy ship and he got called to preach in the ministry and he was he was standing there and, and well he, they 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 docked and he said well I want to find me a Holy Ghost church to go to you know and uh, he said this one guy come out and. And uh, he said, uh, he said he come out. It was Shambok, you know. Shambok was crazy, you know what I mean. He was he was a man of God, 
And he said, he said, all right. He said, hey, man, it looked like him. He said, this is the Holy Ghost feeling. He said he pulled out a lucky pack of lucky strikes. He said, nope, that ain't him. He said, all of a sudden, he said, here come a little old lady. She was skipping down the street. Older lady, just skipping and a humming. He said, this is her right here. He said, hey, hey, sis. He, she said, yes, sir. She said, he said, where are you going? He, she said, I'm going to revival. She said, I'm following you. <laughs> are you hearing me now? Why? Because she had a pep in her step, man. She was full of the Holy Ghost, praise God. See, that's what gives you your strength. God gives you strength. The Holy Ghost will give you strength, amen. Keeping your spirit fed with the Word of God, the truth, and the Holy Spirit, man, that's what will give you strength. It'll, it'll keep your body going. It'll keep you going. It'll keep joy in you, praise God. And man, I tell you, it will. Go without it for a while when you've been in it, and you'll see. It'll, make you, it'll, it'll start making you tired. You'll start getting a little bit down. But anyway, we're going to get into this. So verse 19 or verse 18, he says this. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Number 19 is really the verse I want to point to. I just want to read these, these verses before it and after it. If you be willing and obedient, say willing and obedient. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm willing. Look at your other neighbor and say, I'm obedient. Very important. I'm willing and I'm obedient. There was a time in my life, I want to touch on this right here. There was a time in my life that I was obedient, but I wasn't willing. And I went through this and I heard a man of God tell this testimony and it set me free. It was hearing somebody, you know, the, the, spirit, the spirit of prophecy is, 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 is the spirit, amen, of Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me tonight? So when I heard a testimony, it helped me at that moment for what, from what I was going through because there was a time in my life that I was obedient and I was obeying God, but I wasn't willing to do what it was and it was to preach the gospel. And I know you say, well, what do you mean, Pastor? I'm just being transparent with you, okay? I've had a lot, a lot of bumps and bruises, a lot of falls and I had to get back up and a lot of mishaps. Everybody's different. Everybody ain't the same, okay? But me, I was obedient because God called me to preach, anointed me to preach, and told me to preach. So for a long time, and it was because of a lack of knowledge, it was because my mind, okay, it was because of an immature mindset or something that had been, whatever, I thought it was false humility, whatever it was, I was obedient and I would preach, but I wasn't willing. I didn't want to. I would get up when a, when a, when a call would come, I would come to the pulpit I would go up behind the pulpit and I would be obedient. And I would deliver the message God gave me, but I wasn't willing. I wasn't willing. And I heard a minister, I always knew something was wrong. See, I, I was like, no, I don't want to. It was fear of the Lord, but at the same time it was immaturity and there was a lot of things there that was happening. Okay? But once I heard a testimony, I got willing. I said, well, Lord, I repent. I'm willing. I'm willing. I'm obedient, but I'm going to be willing to go. I'm going to be willing to do it. Man, I'm willing. I love to preach. I love to, you know, I could preach on the street, but when he got me up behind the pulpit, it was different. You know what I mean? But God will choose the foolish things to confound the wise. He'll, amen. And so, but he said, if you're willing and obedient, he said, you'd eat the good of the land. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. I don't know about you, but I want to eat the good of the land, don't you? But if you refuse and rebel, look here in verse 20. If you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. His gifts and callings are without repentance. Are you hearing me tonight? Okay. Amen. Nobody's looking at me too happy. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. <laughs> now let's get into the word. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And verse 15. Hallelujah. Yeah, verse 4, or, or chapter 4, verse 15. He says, For though I have yet ten, I have 10,000 instructors in Christ, Instructors there, the word there is a servant whose office it was to take the children to school. That's what instructors there means. 
a boy leader, a servant whose office it was to take the children to school. So for though I have 10,000 instructors in Christ, or a servant whose office it was to take the children to school, yet have not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. This is Paul writing. Wherefore I beseech you be followers of me. For this cause I sent unto you Timothy, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ, in the anointing. As I teach everywhere in every church, now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you. But I will come to you shortly if the Lord will and will know not the speech of them that are puffed up with but, but the power. And this is what I wanted to get to here. Like I said, I'm laying a foundation for something. And I'm going to go back and touch on this from time to time. I'm going to touch on the, 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 the topic here, which is following instructions. Don't sound like while, while we're into this about following instructions, but we're going to get into something tonight, at least scratch the surface of it. Now verse 20 says this, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Say power. power. Power here is this, is dunamis. It's force. It's miraculous power. Miracle itself, ability, abundance. Meaning, might, miracle, power, strength, violence. Mighty, wonderful work. The kingdom of God is not in word, but in power and demonstration. Are you hearing me? Amen. Now I want to go to this right here after I give you that. 1 Corinthians 15, chapter 50. I'm going to give it to you just like the Holy Ghost laid it out for me. We're going to go back and forth, but this is good. You're going to get, I'm telling you, this is going to be good tonight. I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 15. No, 1 Corinthians, that's right, 1 Corinthians. Hey, hey, hey. This is good stuff. Thank you. 1 Corinthians. 1550, yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was in 2 Corinthians. I was like, oh, it only goes to chapter 12. Okay, let me correct it real quick. 2 Corinthians. No, I'm already in 2 Corinthians. Okay, back to 1 Corinthians. Yes, I said it right the first time. 1 Corinthians 1550, yes, ma'am. You ever done that? <laughs> it's different when you're online too. So anyway, now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood, blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. So now we see the kingdom of God is not in word but in power. And we understand what power is, dunamis, it's force, it's, it's, it's miraculous power, miracle itself, ability, abundance, Meaning, might, miracle, power, strength, violence, uh, mighty, wonderful work. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Um, amen. amen. Now I want you to go to Acts chapter 1-8 because the word power there is used right here. It's the same word, same meaning, which is dunamis. It means, means like a dynamo capable of reproducing itself if you study that all the way out, but it's power, it's miracle work and power. That's why he said the kingdom of God was not in word, but in power, in demonstration. Are you hearing me? God said he would oversee his word, right, to perform it. We understand that. So that's another thing that's important to hear the right word, ain't it? If you don't hear the right word, you don't have nothing to have faith for. We got a lot of people preaching against things and then wondering why they're crying because things ain't happening in their life. Well, wonder why. I'm not going to get into that tonight. Pray for your pastor that I'll stay on point here. I could take 10 different rabbit trails. Okay. Now that word power there in, in huh? Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. So 1 Corinthians 15, 50 where he said this, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. But then 15, I think it was 40, was it 49? Anyway, that verse that said, no, it was on down, but that verse that said where, the, where, the, where flesh and blood... Uh, could not inherit or, or power, which was no, that was back up in in First Corinthians four, uh, verse fifteen. Uh, that word power there, 
is the same word power here in Acts chapter 1-8, okay? He said, but you shall receive power. Say that, power. power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So you shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then, then we got, and I want to stop right there just for a second because I want to say this right here. This is something I got. You receive nothing from God by accident. You correct me later if you got a scripture that proves this otherwise. You will receive nothing from God by accident. You receive because you believe and you have faith. You, let me say that again, if, if those of you taking notes. You will receive nothing from God by accident. You will receive from Him because you believe and have faith. Without faith, He said it's impossible to please Him. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the Word of God. How shall they hear? How shall, he, how, how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall He preach except He be? Sent. How does faith come? By hearing what? The word from preacher. That's how faith comes. He said study to show yourself approved. Faith don't come by studying the word of God. Faith comes by hearing the preacher. Faith comes by hearing the preached word. The preached word. Are you hearing me? That's how faith comes. That's why it's, it's very critical who you hear preach and what they are preaching. Very important. They ain't preaching faith. I don't want to hear it. I can't afford at this moment to sit under something that ain't preaching faith. Right? Without faith, he said, it's impossible to please him. You receive nothing from God by accident. You only receive what you can believe and have faith for. You might receive on somebody else's faith. If somebody else might know God, you, and, or let me put it this way. Somebody else outside might not know God, but you do know God. And you can get them healed or work, working of miracles or gift of healing or whatever it may be. So, in that sense, then, then, then they can receive, right? Because you believe. Sometimes you've got to believe for them. Romans chapter 10, 9, it says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Let me read that again. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead... Thou shalt be saved. I really want to go real deep into this, but I'm just laying a foundation here for this because this is going to be, why I'm saying this is following instructions. Following instructions. That message could go different levels, different depth, whole different. But I, I felt, this is, this is, I just want to stay right here and just begin to build this. Hebrews eleven six it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, Hebrews eleven six was the last scripture. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to go there because I want to read. I want to read the. I'm just going to read line upon line tonight. In Ephesians chapter 1. This opened up to me earlier, and I read about three scriptures of it. You know, usually you just read a word or two. You know, I mean, like the context of it, and you get like something in a, in it, just a, a, a bit and a piece of something. But earlier when I was in the prayer closet, this. I started reading and it just started unfolding and opening up. <clears throat> In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, this is discipleship class tonight, right? 
Amen. So if you'll follow along with me, I'm in the King James. He said, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now remember the title to this, Following Instructions. You hear me? Following Instructions. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Do you see that? He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Say that, all spiritual blessings. All spiritual blessings. In heavenly places. In, heavenly places. In, Christ. in Christ. Or you can say, when you see that Christ, in the anointing. In the anointing. In the anointing. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. We're going to keep reading line upon line, precept upon precept tonight. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Let me, let me, let me stop right there just for a second. What we was talking about the other day. You've got to know where you're from. And if you told a lot of people, what's your heritage? They would start telling me about their, their, their native background. What we all probably would if you said, where, where are you from? Where are you from? What's your people like? What's, what's the, well, I'm from, uh, my people's from Germany. And they're from uh, Anglo-Saxon or wherever that is. You know, and, and, and mixed with Indians and all kinds of stuff. You know, that would be a heritage that, that I would think. But as a new creation in Christ, as a born-again Christian, one of the greatest questions that you'll ever answer to know where you're going, what your purpose is in life, what your purpose is here as a new creation in Christ, first you have to know where you're from. How do I know where I'm from? The B-I-B-L-E. That's still the book for me. You can, hey, people sing that song. It's, it's a child's song, but at the same, the B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E, the Bible. It's still alive. It's still alive. Sharper than any two-edged sword. It's amazing. I love to hear teachings and read books and other things. There's nothing like Opening the Word of God, praying in tongues for about 30 minutes until I get into the Spirit. And all of a sudden, opening the Word of God, at wherever, maybe He might give me a word, tell me to lead me to Colossians or Ephesians. And I open that Word up, and all of a sudden, the pages come to life. And God starts bringing me into the depth of His Word and starts prophesying to me through His Word. You want to know a for sure prophecy? Hmm, right here. Guarantee it. It'll never fail you. God will never fail you. He'll never fail you. So watch this. According, listen, here's some history for you. You want to know where you're from? Right here, look here. According as He had chosen us, us, the church. He's talking to the church here. He's, not ta he's talking to the church at Ephesus. He's talking to us. You want to know who we are? Look in the New Testament. This is, the New Te this is who we are as a New Testament church. New creations in Christ go from Acts to Revelation. This is who we are. We can read the Old Testament. We should, right? The foreshadow points to. But after the resurrection, this is what he's talking. He, this is who he's talking to. He's talking to us. And he'll lay it. What's this? This is so good. This is good stuff. This is so deep. Watch. According, no, verse 4, follow me. According as He had chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world. Before when? Before the foundation of the world. He chose us in Him. I'm just reading this straight out of the Bible. That we should be what? Holy. And without blame before Him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself. According to, his good, to the good pleasure of His will. His will. To the praise of the glory of His grace. Verse 6. 
wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Nobody can ever, when you get this revelation that you are accepted in the beloved, you'll never be rejected again. You'll never let rejection define you ever again. When you get a revelation of this, I'm accepted in the beloved whether you accept me or whether you don't. Whether you reject me or whether you... I'm accepted in Him. He's accepted me. Nobody else can reject me. When you get that revelation, I'm accepted in the beloved. There you go. There's the word. Come on. Amen. Is that good? That's a good word. He said that you know the truth. The truth would make you free. He don't want you in bondage. He wants you free. He wants you free to love. Free to serve. Free to serve in the house of God. Free to run to the altar. Free. 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 Amen. Well, there's nothing like being free. Double free. Hey, I'm free to love. Free. I'm not in bondage. I'm not in slavery. I'm not on, on no string with anybody. I'm not going to be put on no string. I'm not going to let you put me on a string. I'm not going to let nobody bring me under some kind of bondage. You understand? Like that. I'm talking about weirdness. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about channels of authority. I'm, not, I'm talking about weirdness. I'm talking about... You hearing me tonight? Watch this. To the praise of glory. Okay. So we have, He has made us accepted in the Beloved in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace, wherein He hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of His will, according to His good pleasure which He has purposed in Himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times He might gather together one in all things in Christ, in the anointing, both which are in heaven, which are in the earth, even in Him. Follow me here, verse 11. In whom... Also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, now listen to this, in whom you also trusted, after what? You heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Back to the hearing. Back to the preaching. You got to hear the right message before you can have faith to receive it. You had to hear the right message one day. And then you had to have faith to receive it. He said this So you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed. Read that, verse 13. After that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. After that you heard the right message. Paul said this, be be careful, be sure you don't receive another Jesus. He said one that we've not preached. So there is another Jesus. Just because they say Jesus doesn't mean it's the right one. Doesn't mean it's Jesus of Nazareth right here. Doesn't mean it's the gospel. The gospel of the kingdom. Are you hearing me tonight? So he said when you have heard that and then you took that, you believed it. You were sealed in that moment with the Holy Spirit of promise. Back to this. You believe in your heart. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. He said you'd be saved. That's the simplicity. We know we're past that. But what I'm saying, it's the same, it's the same concept with anything in the Word. The, the, the ABCs is the same no matter if you're at this level, at this level, at this level. It doesn't matter. The, 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 the ABCs, what we would call the fundamentals... I like, I like Kenneth Copeland preached a message one time called the ABCs of faith. Fundamentals of faith. He used it in relation to baseball or, or like a World Series. You know, what's the difference in somebody, a team that wins the World Series than the Little League that's playing out here? And he made a very good, a very important statement. He said this. He said, what's different here?" Then, then here are the ones that win the, win, the, win the World Series or the Super Bowl in football. What's the difference? Well, 
the ones that won the Super Bowl have mastered the fundamentals of the game. They've, they've mastered the fundamentals. The fundamentals of the game never has changed. The same thing with the gospel, the believing, the speaking, believe in your heart, speak with your mouth. You'll have whatever you say. The fundamentals in your Christian walk will never change, no matter what level you're on. You still have to believe it, have faith for it, and speak it. And he said, if you believe in your heart, you speak with your mouth, you'll have whatever you say. Now that's back, that's back in, you, I, I took a couple of scriptures there, I'm just preaching to you for a minute. But right here he said this, after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, until the praise of His glory. Anybody getting anything tonight? Amen. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. Now watch this. Verse 15, we're fixing to go into 16 to a prayer here that Paul prayed. And I'm going to read this prayer as I pray this over us. You can take this prayer and pray this over yourself, over your family. Every single day of your life you can come into agreement with this prayer and pray this prayer until the revelation gets so deep in you that you, that you, that you get it to what he's talking about here. When you learn to pray and get these prayers and pray what the Word of God says, you're going to see some difference in your life. You're going to see some change in your walk with God. Kenneth Hagin got a revelation of this and he taught us all this. But he, he, said, he said for years he was preaching and he was, he was doing, you know, and then one day he gets this scripture and he starts praying it. And he'd been preaching for a long time. He said within six months he gained more knowledge and, and revelation than he had the whole time that he'd been preaching. He said, I wondered why the deacons didn't tell me to come in out of the rain the stuff that I was preaching. Because he started getting revelation. And he said, my God, what have I been preaching? I've been preaching about the birds and the bees or something. You know, I mean, he didn't say that. I'm just adding that to it. But this is the prayer that he got. And he said, I started praying this a hundred times a day. Hundreds of times a day I started praying this. Now we're going to get into it. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. No, wait, verse 16. I cease not to, to, to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Now if I'm praying that for myself, I'm going to take that and where He says I'm going to give unto you, because He's praying over the Ephesian church, He's praying over us at this time. I'm going to say, I'm going to say this right here, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation. In what? In the knowledge of Him. That He'll give unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Now watch this. That the eyes of your... I'm going to pray this over you guys. That the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened. If you, if you look at that in the Amplified, what He's saying there, that the... Eyes that your heart, what he's saying right there is this, that your heart, the eyes of your understanding, your heart would be flooded with revelation light. Flooded with revelation light. So he says that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. What is the exceeding greatness of His power to usward who believe according to the working of His mighty power? Which, in verse 20, He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead, set Him at His own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come. And hath put all things under His feet and gave Him to be the head over all things to the church which is His body, the fullness of Him that filleth all in all. Go on down to chapter 2. I'm just reading line upon line here because I love the Word and the Holy Ghost is directing me just to read this line upon line. 
precept upon precept. Because there's such deep revelation in these scriptures here, in this word here. Listen to me, church. Such deep revelation in this word here that can only be revealed to you by the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing me? You might read a chapter over and over and over again. All of a sudden you read it and the Holy Ghost goes, Shh, and you go, whoa. You know, I've read that a thousand times. I've never seen it. All of a sudden, boom, that's a revelation. That's a revealing. He's revealing something to your heart. And that's why if you'll pray this prayer and you'll come into agreement with it, he said, two touching anything, agreeing on it. He said, it'll be done. I'm going to come into agreement with this prayer and I'm going to pray it. And I'm going to thank him at the end of it. I thank you that my heart's being flooded with revelation light. I thank you for that. I thank you, Father, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation, amen, is at work in me. Amen. And that, that, that amen, that, that and, and, and I'm gaining more of a knowledge of you. I'm just, just, just using this as a confession. In chapter 2, verse 1, he says this. He says, And you he hath quickened, or made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air. Watch this. The spirit that now is working in the children of disobedience. Children in disobedience. So there's a spirit that's at work in children. That shows me that they're children of God, but they're in disobedience. And there's a spirit that's at work, the same power of the air, the same spirit that's at work in the world, which we know that's the spirit of Antichrist. Among whom, verse 3, also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. And what's this? And hath raised us up together. And made us, what's this, verse 6, chapter 2, and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's where we get that. We're a seated church, not a defeated church. Because he has made us to sit together with him in heavenly places as he is, so are we in this world. As he is, so are we in this world. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. In verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are now uncircumcised by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hands. Verse 12, listen. That at that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world. Now verse 13, but now, but now, say that, but now, but now. in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. I know this is just the simplicity of the gospel, but man, this is... You don't want to lose this part. <laughs> right? We're, we're laying a foundation here for something. And, and we're going to get into some following instructions. First, you have to know who you are. First, you need to know where you're from. You need to know that you're accepted in the beloved. He's accepted you. 
It's up to you to choose. You choose. You could choose to come into that, or you could choose to reject it. It's up to you. I tell you what, man. God's good. Amen. 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 So, verse 14, for he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself the twain one new man, so making peace, so that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off unto them that were not. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens. Fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles, the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the body, or the building, fitly framed together, groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. Watch this in verse 22. In whom you also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. That last verse there. In whom you are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. I know there's a lot there. You could go down a hundred different trails right there. We, we've, we've read it just line upon line precept upon precept but I want to go into it can y'all handle a few more scriptures here I know it's a lot of word but if you'll get into this at some point this and Hebrews it goes so deep Romans Hebrews and just get in there with the Holy Ghost and start reading this pray these prayers that God would reveal to you that he would give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in what? in the knowledge of him I want to say something about knowledge real quick you know, we hear a lot about knowledge. You know, we, we need knowledge. And I, I, we all preach this as preachers. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, right? And, and, and we understand that. So we understand here that, that there's a good knowledge. There's a healthy knowledge, right? But then you go back to Adam and Eve when he went and God told him. He said, this is the only tree that you do not eat of is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The tree of knowledge. You don't eat of this tree. But you, can eat of it, you can eat of everything else, but don't eat of this tree. And then we see here that we need a knowledge. You can look, you can look up the word knowledge. I mean, there's, it's all through the scriptures. I had somebody tell me, well, you need, you need to watch regular TV. I had a Christian tell me this. and He said, you need to watch regular TV. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need a knowledge of that. And I thought, well, that don't sound right to me to sit and feed myself because I don't have nothing with it. You know, I don't have no kind of... I'm not saying to stick your head in the sand because, and go hide in a hole somewhere and say, I'm holy. You, you know, we got this weirdness going on, this holiness stuff going on. We are holy. We are, we, we believe in holiness. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying to you. We believe in holiness. Without holiness, nobody shall see the Lord. We understand that, okay? But, but, but holiness is not you wearing a certain kind of clothing and, and going and sitting in a corner somewhere with other holy people and, and, and sitting there and, and calling yourself holy. And, and never going out into the world, or never going out into the world because we don't want to touch the world because, you know, we're holy, you know. So there's a line there, okay, because he said, go into all the world and preach. And he says, you're the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth. So there's a balance there when, when, he, when he says, you're in the world, but you're not of the world. So I'm in the world, but I'm not partaking of what the world's doing. You know, a lot of Christians, here's where they missed it. They went out into the world, but they started doing what they was doing. They thought they was going to win them, but what happened is they ended up getting lost. They ended up losing their self in the process because they thought they wanted to become like them so they could win them, but at the same time, when they did that, they compromised their faith. And they ended up falling because they had compromised their faith. That's not what it was. They was to go into the world, but they wasn't to be like the world. 
People that are lost and undone, they're in that lifestyle. They're not looking for something that looks like them. They're looking for something that looks different. They're looking for somebody with a message of hope. So I'm not sitting, we're not sitting in this church going, oh, we're so holy. No, we're coming and getting sharpened. I'm equipping you for ministry. I'm a, that's what my job is. I'm equipping you. I'm equipping us for ministry. We, we're getting together. We're getting sharpened. People's getting start. Ministries are starting to come forth. You know, people are starting to get in there. You know, and, and all this will start going out of the church. Why? Because we've got to be the church. We're not turned inwardly like hiding. We're, 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 we're getting sharpened up, getting anointed, getting, getting a word in us, getting to go out, snatch them up out the fire, to go out, take dominion, have dominion. You understand that? To go out and be who, we, be who he says we are. He said we're fellow citizens with the household of God. I'm, not a, I'm a citizen of the United States, but I'm a, I'm a citizen of heaven first and foremost. My citizenship to heaven and the country I'm from comes first and foremost. I won't, I won't betray that one for no citizenship. You, you, when you understand where you're from, then you can understand what your purpose is here and you know where your destiny is going to be because you know where you're going. So no longer am I walking around without purpose. No longer are you walking around not knowing why you're here. A lot of people go their whole life and don't even know why they're here. They're like, if I could only find my purpose. They get, they get up in age. Nothing wrong with that. No matter how old you are, you can get shifted over into your purpose. You can find out what your purpose is and still get back into alignment. I'm not telling you that it's too late. It's not too late if you're listening to me. But here's the, here's the thing. A lot of people go after their dream. One of the biggest deceptions of Satan. Your dream. At some point you had to die and lose your life. What for? He said if you lose your life, you'll find it. You try to save your life, you lose it. Jesus said it. Period. Point blank. A lot of people are running, even as Christians, they're running after their own thing, but they've never died. They've never said, Lord, what's your will? Are you hearing me? Amen. Amen. So verse, verse. I'm going to touch on this one verse real quick. I'm going to go back to 3 and 9. Or, or I'm going to go down to 3 and 9. And he, this, is, this is Ephesians chapter 3 verse 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God who created all things in Christ Jesus who hath created all things by Christ Jesus so in verse 9 he says this and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in who? And God, yeah. One more scripture here and I'll, I'll be done. John chapter 5 and verse 30. John chapter 5 verse 30. This is Jesus speaking. He said, I can do, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. My judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which sent me. I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which sent me. Jesus didn't come to do his own will. He came to do the will of the Father. Can you handle a couple more? I want to take you one more place here. John chapter 6. Go there. Verse 38. Let's, let's, or 32 through... I want to read this little story to you right here. Or what Jesus is talking about. John chapter 6 verse 32. It says, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, 
But my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that you also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will but the will of him who sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will, verse 40, of him that sent me that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day. Now I'm going to read just a couple more because I want, to, I want you to hear what the Jews are saying. Then the Jews murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, is, it, is not this Jesus the son of Joseph whose father and mother we know? What's this? This is the way they'll always say, ain't that, that, ain't that old fella? Didn't we know him? That's why he said a prophet was that with, without honor in his own country. Because they're going to look at you, they're going to still see the old, they still going to see the old man, well, ain't, that, ain't that that old drug addict, ain't that that old thief, ain't that that old liar, ain't that old what's his name, Kim folk, ain't that old this, ain't that that family, ain't that this family, and that's all they can see him for, that's the way they said to Jesus, you know, ain't that the carpenter's son, you know, they couldn't ever see him as the Messiah, because all they could see him for was the natural, all they could see him, well that's the carpenter's son down there, that's Joseph's boy. And that's what they said. Look, the Jews murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came. And they said, Is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it that he saith, I came down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me. Draw him. I will raise him up at the last day. I know we've had a lot of scripture here today, church. I'm laying a foundation for something, and I want to I want to continue to get into this because as we get into this, it's going to get some we're going to get some serious meat uh, in the Word of God about following instructions and uh, and the importance of that. But today, I wanted to kind of just lay a foundation and just I, I felt like just wanted to 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 get bring us back to the importance when I say this. I want to bring us back to the importance. Man of the word of God. You know, as I said in there today, because I hear a lot of preaching, and I, I, I love preaching, and I listen to certain ministers, that, and I, I'm fine-tuned about who I listen to nowadays. But, but when I could shut off all distractions, and I could just come back to a place and just get into the Spirit and just open the Bible again, I know this sounds like ABC Christianity. But it's almost like the longer you walk with God, the more you need this part of it. Because you start getting such revelation and, and you, you, you start walking in gifts in the Spirit, and words of knowledge and words of wisdom, and God starts using you in high levels of anointings if you're walking with Him the right way and seeking the kingdom. And, and you fail just to come back sometimes like a child. You know? And, and, and just sit at his feet again. And just, just, I mean, not open it to prove somebody wrong or because you have such great wisdom and knowledge, but to come back as a child and open the Bible up and pray and just read it like a child would sitting at the Father's feet, anxious to hear something or to, to get a word that's going to bring me some life today. You know what I mean? So it sounds like ABC Christianity, but if you ever lose this part, you lose relationship, then where are you headed from there? If you lose relationship with the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, you get over into a ritual or you'll get over into religion or you'll start just going through the motions, but there's no relationship. 
So you have to really cultivate and come back to a place of sincerity, of humility, and just quit being a prophet or whatever it is that we want to be. And I'm saying this to me, the, the, the great pastor, the great whatever, I'm not, but I'm just saying, and I come back to a place as a child again, realizing that I, I can't live unless I've got the manna from heaven. I can't live no longer unless I've got that bread that's coming down, my daily bread. I cannot be sustained on anything else but daily bread. And it has to be fresh every day. Kind of like he did with the children of Israel, except he brought manna up from the ground and they was eating there to fill. Well, take that spiritually. That's why Jesus said, yeah, he fed them. Moses did, but I'm the bread that came down from heaven. And if you take of this bread, you'll never hunger again. You, you take of this, you'll never thirst again. That's why they asked Jesus. They said, well, you ain't eight days. I, you know, I'm just paraphrasing, speaking my own language here. You ain't eight days. And he said, well, I got meat to eat that you don't know nothing about. Like Daniel did in that prison. Wasn't it Daniel? He said, I'm not going to eat the king's meat. What I'm going to do is I, you just bring me this right here and watch. They said, no, you're going to get us killed. He said, just trust me. They was eating all that fancy stuff. And he said, watch this. I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. I'm going to eat that manna from heaven. I'm going to eat this little bit of stuff that's going to sustain my body. And God's going to give me my strength. Amen. They said they'd come back and he was shining, brother. His countenance was, was just like, like gold. I mean, his countenance was just, he had, he had been with the Father. He was, you know what I'm saying? They was all eating all the king stuff. And they were still looking malnutrition because they were not eating the right stuff. So why I say that is, church, is to remind us to come back to a place of, of, of humility, come back to a place as a child again. Never leave that place. Remain teachable. Man, I tell you, when I read that, it, it, it was, it, like I said, you're getting great revelation. We, we, we walk in, I believe, some great revelation to, to, what, to what I hear a lot of people preaching. But when I come back to that place, it was like I heard it for the first time all over again. When I opened up to Ephesians again, Sister Ashley, when I opened it up to Ephesians and I started feeding on that again, it opened up to me and it was like the first time. I mean, it was brought back to my memory and I've already had that revelation, but it was just like it was fresh and new. It was fresh manna from heaven at that moment. And man, it was like the first time that I'd heard it. And it was that good still it wasn't like well I've read Ephesians 1 bro I read that all the time bro I read that all the time it wasn't like that it was like wow I'm accepted in the beloved nobody can reject me whether they reject me or whether they don't it doesn't change the fact of who I am because God's accepted me and he's the one that died for me Jesus gave his life for me. I'm just using this as an example to you. And now I've come back to this place of fresh manna again. And it was like, just read it line upon line. You don't got to come in here every time. Just read it line upon line. Create a hunger in them again for the Word and the Spirit. Create a hunger in you again for the pure Word of God again. The time that you used to spend when you'd block everything out and you'd get in there undisturbed. That time that you'd get in there and you'd just pray in the Holy Ghost and you'd, you'd seek God's face with everything that was in you and you didn't care about nothing else at that moment except Him. Any of you that's been intimate with God, man, you'll know what I'm talking about. Anybody's truly been intimate with Him. When you've been in that place of intimacy, you can't live without it. You cannot live without that intimacy. Intimacy. Fresh and new. When I go without that for a day or two, I start getting, man, frustrated. I start getting, my wife's like, look, you need to get in the prayer closet. She knows. She's like, look, you, you need to get in there. You're angry. You need to get in there. You need to get with God. Because you get so much going on and you fail to take that time out just to 
Put everything away. Open the B-I-B-L-E again. And get you a clear mind. Get your spirit clear. And just read it as if it was the first time that you'd ever read it. Man, you tell me, you're talking about just opening you up. You're talking about opening up and God speaking to you. Man, and you come in all full of faith and full of, you come in full of the word, full of the spirit. Amen. Are you hearing me tonight? Amen. Is that making you want to go home and read? Amen. Is that creating a hunger in you? Amen. That's what I want to do tonight. I want to say this tonight, listen, those of you online, those of you that follow us, listen, share this video. I know we've read a lot of scriptures here, but scriptures are important. And right now in the times that we're living in, I promise you, I promise you, you need to get into this word like you've never been before. And you need to take a hold and stay on the straight and the narrow path. It's a, it's a straight and it's a narrow path. He said there would be there, there, there was a broad way and the many would be there that would be deceived and they would go the broad way. If, you, if I never tell you anything else, those of you online, listen to me. Get a hunger back for the pure and grafted, unadulterated word of the living God again. And let the Spirit of God begin to speak to you again through His word. And get so in tune with it, so in tune with the gospel, so, so, so on fire again, that you'll not be deceived. This is the times, I'm telling you. This is, they, these churches on everything. And that's good. I mean, the gospel should be preached, and, and it is a time of great harvest. I get it. But it's also a time of great deception, too, church. It's a time of great deception. You better listen. And he said if it, was, if it was possible, even the very elect would be deceived. Get your relationship back with God. Most of you are probably already on fire, probably got a better one than I do. But I'm just saying, if you don't, get that back. Cultivate that again. Cultivate that relationship like you had. Don't let that slip. Get it back. Get a hunger back for the Word. Get a hunger back for the prayer life. Get a hunger back. We used to pray. You used to be a prayer warrior. You used to pray. You used to pray for people. Get a hunger back for that. I found myself at times just not wanting to pray for nobody. They'd reach out. They'd reach out. They'd reach out to me so much from all over. Want me to pray for everything. And I found myself just like, man, I don't even want to pray for them. Man, please. You know, I found myself. I'm repenting right now. I found myself, please don't even reach out to me. They, pray, they want me to pray for everything. And I know you can't pray for everybody and every little hangnail and all that. You need to be in a body. You need to be somewhere with another body of believers. We don't need you on a prayer list. We need to put you, you need to be somewhere with a body of believers where y'all can get together and pray. We can't pray for everybody everywhere. But what I'm saying is, is, man, if you're not careful, you'll let that stuff get in you and you'll let that start to push you away from wanting to do any of it. Cultivate that again, church. Cultivate your prayer life. Cultivate your, your relationship again. Don't let it slip. Don't let it slip. Amen. Listen, if you don't know Jesus tonight and you want to make him Lord of your life and you've heard the gospel today, all you got to do is repent, ask him into your heart right now. He said, if you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth on the Lord Jesus Christ. He said you'd be saved. Invite him into your heart right there. Start your new life with him. Reach out to us. Let our media team know. We'll pray with you. Send us your name address, uh, anything like that. Listen, we love you guys. Pray you've been blessed tonight in Jesus' name. Amen.